Thank you everyone for coming, including the board members. I know we have a couple of folks who indicated they wouldn't be able to get here on time, but hopefully they'll, uh, they'll be here soon. I'll just stand so you can see me better. <clears throat> so the purpose of this meeting is to uh, initiate the, the, the open portion or open uh, part of the budget process. Uh, we are reaching a point, as I'll show in a second, where we're, we're closing in on the, the final budget details, and tomorrow is Governor Christie's budget address, so we'll find out what our state aid figures are uh, within 48 hours of his address. So, of course, the Finance Committee has been meeting on a regular basis, um, giving us direction as an administration, and um, the, the primary purpose of this meeting is to enable the other board members who are not on the Finance Committee uh, to see what the, what the high level uh, view of the budget is at the current time. And Peter, maybe yeah. you can figure out the light uh, in a second. Okay, so as Mr. DeCroix is giving out the, uh, the folders, I'll, I'll kind of just get right to it. Um, typically, just in terms of timeline and process, we begin to work with the school buildings, the principals, the supervisors, and such uh, in the late fall on developing their budgets. Uh, they submit their budgets to us uh, usually in December. That was the case this year, too. And then in January and February, uh, the business office kind of culls the budget, goes through, reviews all of the requests, tries to uh, identify any redundancies. Um, we have discussions with principals. We're, we're in the process of finishing those discussions now just in terms of items that we uh, think we might be able to do without or items that we think we might have missed. And then uh, from this point on now, once the governor gives the address and supplies us with the state aid figures, we will finalize uh, the budget and it will be submitted to the executive county superintendent preliminarily in March and then again uh, in late March as a final version. And then that version is the one that will be submitted to the voters and the vote will be on April 21st. Um, so just a, a quick snapshot of our current budget. Um, our current budget relies almost entirely on the local tax levy. Uh, so for this current school year, we were uh, funded over 90% via the local tax levy. We had a s small percentage of aid coming from the state, and that comes from extraordinary aid and then um, what we might call uh, additional state aid. Uh, that's the figure that we're really waiting on for tomorrow. Uh, we get a little bit of federal money that's all tied to special education pretty much and then we have some miscellaneous revenue and last year we um, we took out or withdrew uh, funds from capital reserve to finance certain projects so that's just the general kind of overview or, or snapshot of the current budget year that we're in so looking ahead then to 1516 which is the the budget that we're talking about now um, if we looked at the total local tax levy uh, by law, the Board of Education is authorized to increase the local tax levy by a maximum of 2%. Uh, in addition to the 2%, if the district qualifies for any kind of waiver to the cap, uh, the Board of Education can increase the tax levy by that amount as well. We don't have those numbers yet finalized in terms of the, the waiver amounts. Uh, and then, in addition, uh, other revenues include state aid, uh, which we're hoping remains flat Again, we'll find out by the end of this week. Federal aid, which we hope will remain flat. Uh, and then if we were to withdraw more money or less money in capital with, in, from capital uh, reserve, that could you know, swing the budget one way or the other. Uh, we don't have as much money in capital uh, reserve now as we uh, did before the high school, rent, uh, high school expansion. So we don't anticipate withdrawing much out of capital reserve. So for the past two years, of course, um, presentations like this really focused uh, pretty heavily on second questions and uh, questions that the Board of Education and administration were putting forward to the voters to try to expand programming in one way or another. So for two years running now, uh, we've had second questions. Uh, two years ago, uh, the, the Hurricane Sandy year, you know, after Hurricane Sandy, we put forward two different second questions, one for school counseling staff and one for security personnel. Both of those questions were approved and that brought the local tax levy increase to 3.46%. And then in 14-15, the current year we're in, uh, we had a second question last year uh, that was uh, almost as, as much or, or 
you know, roughly equivalent to the two questions the year before, and that was to increase our uh, programming in STEM. And that ended up resulting in a 3.34% tax levy increase. So this year, the charge um, <clears throat> to us uh, by the Board of Education and the Finance Committee so far has been to zero in on, on enough funding to maintain our current programs. In other words, uh, avoid any programmatic cuts and maintain class sizes where they are. In other words, not reduce staff so that class sizes rise. Uh, the committee's also discussed modest capital improvements, uh, not taking on major, major projects. And um, the, the one kind of set of projects that we had approved last year uh, for state funding through the Rod Grant program were to renovate some bathrooms at, at Chatham High School. Uh, and then we have a couple of uh, additional special education teachers that we anticipate needing at Chatham Middle School, and that's just due to enrollment increases. And we would seek to fund those uh, staff members through uh, the savings that we'll get from more expensive staff members who retire. Usually we don't rely on uh, money from retirements to fund anything in the budget, uh, but this year we're going to do that. So an overview of the, of the revenues and expenditures shows what the uh, tax levy uh, increase would be if we uh, take into account that previous slide that I, just, uh, that I just showed. In other words, if we maintain what we have, we don't add anything additional to our program, such as the second questions, uh, like we have in the past two years, and we, in other words, keep the budget lean and dedicated to uh, maintaining current programs. So the total tax levy increase right now, and I wanna stress this is uh, preliminary and we're still working on this, and this assumes flat state aid figures, so we, we don't know that that will be certainly the case, uh, but the tax levy increase would come in right now at 1.96%, and you can see the various um, revenues and ex expenditures, and of course, Peter, Mr. DeQuilla can uh, elaborate on those if the board members have any questions. The tax impact per $100,000, you can see um, on the, the bottom set of, uh, of rows there, uh, so it would be a, obviously less of a tax levy increase than it was last year uh, because it's a, it's a smaller amount. And we just put for frame of reference if the board elected to go to the, the statutorily authorized level of 2%, uh, there'd be a little bit more money, uh, roughly uh, $25,000 I think it was, um, that it could increase the budget by still get to 2%. But we're a little bit below that now. Uh, so as I mentioned, the, the two, the, the main factors that are outstanding that we're waiting word on is uh, the state aid figures. Everybody knows that the state of New Jersey is broke and that there is a lot of fighting right now over how to allocate the resources that the state has. So we're a little bit on pins and needles, I'd say, hoping that our aid remains flat. And then um, we'll also know if there are any waivers that the board could consider, uh, even though I don't anticipate the board would want to consider any waivers unless we have drastic cuts in state funding. Um, to the tax levy cap. Uh, just for um, comparison's sake, uh, you can see I, I just took a number of schools with which we often compare ourselves. Um, last year I used our peer school groups, which will be in our testing report later on this evening. Um, but if you look at most school districts in New Jersey, uh, Chatham spends less per pupil on a budgetary basis. Uh, than they do, and the outcomes overall are very good. AP participation rate is just the number of unique students, as the state calls them. Uh, in other words, how many students take a test, take an AP test, um, and then uh, the denominator there is uh, the total number of students in your junior and senior class. And then post-secondary enrollment uh, refers to students who are matriculated at a college or university 16 months after they graduate from high school. Uh, and you can see we, we compare very favorably to those other schools, and those other schools are, are terrific uh, as well. The calendar from here on out is uh, up on the screen. We'll have another open finance committee meeting two weeks from tonight, and by that time, obviously, we'll have the state aid figures. We will have had an opportunity to finalize some of the other details uh, in the budget, and um, at that point, 
we'll get more feedback from the board. And then on the 23rd will be the, the final hearing. That's a, a month from tonight, of course. And then the, the vote is two months from tonight. And that will, the vote will, will happen or coincide with both the board election and the referendum vote. So that's the overview. Sure. I know you had mentioned that you're hoping that it stays flat. Is there any hope that it would ever increase or that's just completely off the table? I know, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but... It seems like that's completely off the table. Okay. But initially, the, when, when, when we lost almost all of our aid in 2010-11, I think was the year, we were told that our aid would be put back incrementally and that we'd get back to the level of funding we were at in 2010. Right. Uh, and that happened for a couple of years, but then it hasn't happened the last couple. We so. haven't reached our state aid mm -hmm. back to 9-10. Um, we are uh, in the neighborhood of 37% lower, and I want to say that that is roughly $1.5 million. Uh, but I'd, I'd, I'm doing that off the top of my head. I think uh, we're certainly lower by quite a bit still, as are many other districts. So I think this accurately reflects the conversations of the Finance Committee to date. I don't know if Mr. Gilfill and you want to uh, elaborate on anything or are, discuss anything sorry, with other are, are some members. of the Abbott districts, I assume some of the J districts are not back, but the Abbott districts are significantly back. Is that, is that how the money's being distributed? I, I can't, I don't know okay. the answer to that. I know that there, most districts like us certainly don't have the level of funding that they that once they did had. when it was taken away. Okay. Thank you. I mean, the only comment I have is that basically right now, with, as we move through the ECIP program, um, we are lucky enough to be able to do a lot of our capital improvement projects um, off of that ECIP program, which allows us to give this flexibility in, in our year term budget. Um, I'm happy that we're below 2%. You know, we're going to try to continue to whittle that down if possible um, as we move through. Uh, I think it's proper to expect no increase in state aid. Um, I'm glad we're able to uh, go to the taxpayers with this figure, hopefully a little bit lower, um, with that uh, potential referendum, uh, making it a bit more hopefully palatable for the taxpayers. Yes. Yeah, like I said, the last couple of years, the, the bulk of these meetings has been related to second questions and, and um, you know, whether the items were necessary or critical, and then the board trying to determine what level of tax levy increase it would want. The other difference uh, between this year and the past two years has been, if you recall, we've had, you know, probably roughly a half a million dollars in waiver, you know, in cap waiver, yeah. banked cap, mm -hmm. that the board also had a lot of back and forth over how much of that it should uh, tap or utilize or leave on the table. And as of today, we don't have any uh, banked Wait, cap. Yes. It all expired last year. So, um, you know, there's a little less money. Um, you know, there's, there's less probably to the discuss and debate. So if I could make a point to that. Going with this very, very tight uh, budget, um, are we compromising ourselves? Are we leaving ourselves in a in a in a tighter spot than than you might feel is prudent? Are we allowing less flexibility in the event of an unexpected event or an increase in enrollment or anything else that might otherwise you know put some pressure on the budget? Uh, you just hit my biggest concern, Tom. That's an unexpected. Uh, enrollment jump someplace. So in a, a couple of years ago, we had more kids than we anticipated register at Milton Avenue School in the first grade. Uh, a few years ago, it was Southern Boulevard School. 
about the same grade level, I think, if I recall. Uh, so usually we don't want to allocate much money that we're getting or much savings that we think we're deriving from retirements, and we want to make sure that we have just a little bit of, of cushion in case we end up getting an influx of students one grade level or another. We don't really have that flexibility in this current proposal right now. Um, it's still early, so there may be more people who retire, and we may derive more savings from that. Um, but that would be my probably one area where I'm a little less comfortable than usual. But you feel nonetheless that this is a responsible budget proposal? Yes. We're not, we're not in your opinion, we're not putting ourselves in a, in a position where we would not be able to accommodate reasonably expected needs for the Correct. District. Sorry. Sorry, I just want to look at the AP participation rate slide again, which, and a lot of these numbers come from the report cards. Yeah, the, the participation rate and post-secondary enrollment come from the report cards, and the per-pupil budgetary cost comes from the Taxpayer's Guide to Education Spending. Okay. And, I, and, I, and the post-secondary enrollment is a real indicator of how successful our kids in college because they're still enrolled, you know, 16 months out. When you look at some of the other schools, even in our district or our peer group, rather, in our the same district or the same now peer group, they're not at that same level. So it's interesting that 16 months out, our kids are still enrolled in some of our, you know, schools that we compare ourselves against. Because that, that, I've looked at all these report cards for all these other schools and they're not that high. So for our 12,000 or 13,000 a year per pupil, well, they're getting, they're quite successful after they leave here. Which hopefully means they have jobs very quickly when they come back home. <laughs> Not quite. We don't have that uh, data. No, no. I don't have any other questions. Do you want to open it up for public? I'm sorry? Do you want to open it up? Sure. Uh, we'd like to open up for the public commentary, the four or five of you that have joined. Mr. Ruth? So usually when we look over the five or ten year period, the big increases in costs are in the category of uh, medical expenses. Um, mm -hmm. do, we want to give, do we want to give him a microphone? Maybe because there's no public yeah, there's mic. One more. Um, no, no, no. Oh, we switched it up. You can, uh... <clears throat> Sorry, Alan. Healthcare. So normally in a school budget uh, in Chatham, the, uh, the big increases or changes in expenses are typically due to, uh, say, four or five categories, and those include uh, medical expenses, uh, salaries for teachers, um, special education cost, energy, which I wouldn't expect as a factor this year, and sometimes other things like maintenance. So. If you look at those four or five categories, uh, what's assumed in this budget in terms of, of increases in those cost categories? Thank you. Uh, I'll give you the easy one first for the salary end. Everything that the, the district is currently under contract or has contracts with all of its employees, so all of the salary increases are at the contracted rates uh, following the teacher agreement. Uh, the central administrator agreement and all of the other um, employees. For health benefits, our preliminary estimate was a 10% increase in medical benefits. Uh, please be aware that the district employees continue to move up the scale of Chapter 78, where the teachers will move to year three of the scale, and the custodians and maintainers, uh, as long with the secretaries, and paraprofessionals also to year and secretaries to year three, the central administrators, the central administrators to year two, and majority other employees year two. So the district is collecting a little more of employee participation or employee contribution for health benefits. Uh, energy remains uh, just about uh, flat because the district has been trying to control its 
uh, energy usage with conservation, and luckily the energy rates uh, have remained relatively flat. And I think I tackled all of your questions. Oh, special ed is uh, gone through. Our director of special ed does a very good job in controlling costs and tries to find the most efficient way to properly educate all of the students with the IEP program. So we feel that we're covered under all bases, all of the bases you mentioned in the budget. And we're waiting for final updates for health benefits for our insurance program. Can you put numbers on things like how much the salaries go up and how much the special ed go up in percentage terms? I have them not ready as we weren't going to go into that much detail because we're waiting to put a better attempt at the budget together hopefully when the state aid comes through on Wednesday. The, the salary ranges in general, Alan, they, they range depending on the unit from 2% um, and, and actually less in some cases, but overall on average for the average unit, 2% up to 2.75. The higher ranges, though, have other um, uh, givebacks, if you will, so that the net figure uh, we believe is, coming, is down at 2%. Special education this year, we... Uh, should have a lower increase, though the, the staff members that we know we need to target, um, or you know, like the staff positions that we have to include in the budget via the, uh, the retirement savings will be primarily special ed staff. Uh, and that's because we have continued to diversify our program to keep more kids in district and uh, give them a place where they can learn alongside their peers. Uh, but we've expanded the number of special education offerings in the district. So we don't have a percentage number right now on, on special ed in particular. We'll have that by next meeting. Um, but we think, it's, it's, we think we've moved in a very good direction overall in terms of special education. Do I recall correctly, this is the third year of the, of the uh, um, teacher's contract, correct? Next, entering, we'll uh, enter. We will yep. be entering it. And as, if I recall correctly, the rate of increase in the third year was the lesser or the least of the three years of the contract. Is that not correct? No, the rate, the, the average increase was the same in all three years, right. um, but there were other right. provisions. Um, the chapter 78, you know, the, et cetera. Chapter 78 was one, but even in the, like the highest reaches of the agreement, um, the, the, the raise was under 1%. So it, it varies depending on the, the position, level experience, and all of that. But the salary increase was roughly the same. And then there were other um, you know, emoluments in, that, that were included in the negotiations that helped bring the price down, the total cost down. But the Chapter 78 was a major um, net uh, for the district because the staff members are assuming a much larger portion of their medical um, uh, insurance premium. Those vary all over the place. Um, ten percent is ten uh, percent um, is not the, a recent trend uh, for uh, out of uh, district placement. The individual placement rates are uh, anywhere from zero or less to you know maybe as high as ten percent. But the average uh, special needs school is not increasing by anything close to ten percent these days. Yes, yeah, some of them we have. Some of them have been approved and published, um, and our special ed uh, you know assistant superintendent for special education has tried to estimate as best he can where the tuitions will be. We've reduced the number of students who we are placing out of district as a result of some of the programs that we've launched. So we have fewer kids right now placed out of district than we did four or five years ago. Um, I'm just 
curious. I've never um, yeah, attended. Your Sorry? Can you state your name? Yeah, Libby Hills and Rap, Chatham Borough, 37 Weston Ave. Um, I haven't been to one of these budget meetings before, but um, I think there was a slide before that showed an increase of three point something percent. That was last year. Yeah. That was last year. Okay, so yeah, this. Current year, 14, 15, so last year's April. Um, okay. So we're talking about 15, 16. So what we're looking at is. The white column. Well, there's two white columns. One, they're both proposed. And if we, if we go up to the full 2%, which the law allows, that's what the numbers would be. The Finance Committee is recommending 1.96%. Okay, so under the 2% cap. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Um, and on March 23rd is the public meeting to present this budget with the. 1.96%, is that right? Yes. So the open finance meeting on the okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, so March 23rd, there's a window of time um, when all districts must appro officially approve or formally approve the budget that they submit For to that. the executive county superintendent. Okay. So our date would be March 23rd. March 23rd is yep. when we have to submit. And it's, it's, it's when the Board of Education has to officially have a hearing and approve the budget in a regularly scheduled board meeting. Okay, so they vote on it? Yes. Okay, March 23rd is the vote. Okay. Um, is there any money allocated, and I don't know if this is the right time for this because it's a finance committee meeting, um, is there any money allocated in the budget for televising or recording the meeting? That's not something, that's not so, oh, is it, did you have it? I mean, did when does that it? get decided? Yep. Based, uh, we did add it in conversations with finance and the board. They did want to, I guess, for the fact that, unfortunately, due to weather, we have only had one board meeting televised. Right. Um, or we've only had one board, board meeting since we've been televising them, and the board has decided to make the funds available to continue. Oh, that's great. So Into for next 15, year, 15, 16, 16 year. budget? Wonderful, great, okay. Um, thank you, I think that was it. Does anybody else have any questions? In accordance with the provisions of this act, the School Districts of the Chathams Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, place thereof posted in the Board Administrative Offices, the, sent to the clerks of the borough and the township, the libraries of Chatham, the Chatham Courier, the Daily Record, the Star Ledger, and the Independent Press. Mr. DeQuillo, would you mind doing roll call? Mr. Gilfillis. Here. Mr. Velvet. Here. Ms. Clark. Here. Mr. Connolly. Ms. Crowley. Here. Mr. Frank. Here. Mr. Kenny. Here. Mr. Mountain. Here. Here. Thank you very much. Would everybody please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 And just a reminder, we're recording this meeting. Um, if you have public, when you come up for public commentary, if you come up to the microphone on the left side of the room as you face the room. I, I do not have any additional comments at this time. I will at the beginning of the public commentary section. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Dr. Lutz Sousa for the superintendent's report. Thank you, Ms. Weber. Uh, we've had a couple of snow outs uh, over the past month or so, so we've been pushing off uh, one of our annual reports that we usually do uh, around January or February, and that is the testing report. Uh, the state of New Jersey releases statistics about student performance in school districts on an annual basis. Uh, they're known as the school performance reports. Um, and so Ms. Chase, our assistant superintendent, is going to review uh, the latest reports uh, with us in just one minute. Uh, but I will say as a result of the of the testing from last year, we had two distinctions to mention, uh, which Ms. Chase will mention, but I'll, I'll hit the punchline now, uh, which is that Southern Boulevard uh, 
was nominated, just like Milton Avenue School was a year ago, for a National Blue Ribbon School of Excellence Award. Uh, that's quite a distinction. There were about a dozen schools in New Jersey last year that were uh, nominated in such a way. So uh, probably will be another dozen or so this year, and we're excited that uh, another one of our schools was given that honor. And then uh, the state of New Jersey, through its No Child Left Behind waiver that it submitted in 2012, I think it was, um, established three categories of schools that the Department of Education identifies on an annual basis. One category is uh, called uh, focus schools of focus. Others are re, um, priority schools, rather, and priority and focus schools are ones that have some deficiencies in their performance, according to the state anyway, and must uh, develop plans for improvement. And there's a third category uh, known as reward schools. Uh, there have been about a, between 100 and 150 or so schools on an annual basis recognized by the state of New Jersey as reward schools for outstanding performance. And this year, Lafayette Avenue School uh, was cited as one of those schools. So we're happy that we've had uh, a good run with a number of our schools uh, gaining distinctions and honors as a result of their test testing performance. And uh, I mention that as Ms. Chase begins the annual overview of how our kids fared tonight. Tom, we're going to switch to the presentation. Yeah, we can dim them. Yeah, do what you did with the finance. What you did before in finance was perfect. <clears throat> Good evening. As Dr. Lucis has said, I'm here to present the annual testing report. The presentation will be divided into three parts. First, I will talk about the transition in assessments from the New Jersey ASK to the PARC assessments, which we will administer for the first time in New Jersey, beginning in actually next week. We will administer them here in Chatham. I will then, I will then talk about a peer school comparison. Um, unlike the DFG, which has primarily compared school districts based on the socioeconomic status of the town in which the students reside, the peer school comparisons reflects more of the demographic of the student population. It considers the percent of limited English proficient students, the percent of special education students, the percent of students who are qualifying for free or reduced lunch, and also the grade configuration of the actual school. And then I'll follow up by talking about the next steps that we will pursue in the district with regard to mathematics and English language arts, and then share some information which, with you which was recently released um, that will provide somewhat of an overview of what the park score reports may look like. As I mentioned, there's, there's been a lot of transition in the state of New Jersey over the past five years. The first transition primarily deals with standards. In New Jersey, we've had standards since 1996, but in 2010, the State Department of Education voluntarily adopted the Common Core state standards. School districts were provided a three-year window by which they could begin the transition to the assessments. So during that time, districts worked on revising curriculum, adopting resources and materials that would help teachers teach to these standards. And standards are basically learning objectives that the students need to acquire by the end of each grade level. While, these, while we were uh, transitioning to the standards and once we adopted them fully and implemented in 2013-2014, the New Jersey ASK started to transition to reflect the changes that were being taught as a result of the new adoption of the Common Core State Standards. So this slide here speaks to that transition from spring of 2012 to 2015. Now the, the data that I will share with you in a second reflects last year's spring administration of the New Jersey ASK. Now this spring, starting on March 2nd in Lafayette Avenue School, Chatham High School, and Chatham Middle School, we will administer the first park assessment. Before I get into the actual data, I just want to point out a few highlights uh, that you'll see in the charts that I will share. And as Dr. Lucy cement, there's a few accolades that we're very proud of, the, one of them being that Lafayette Avenue School has been identified as a reward school. And also, Chatham High School has the highest post-secondary attendance rate out of all the public schools in New Jersey. So these are some of the highlights that you'll see illustrated in the next few charts. 
As I mentioned earlier, the comparison by which we look at, our, at Chatham um, against other school districts is within a peer school group. So the next few slides, the next six slides, will show the peer school groups for each of our schools. So this is the peer school group, the districts within the, which the peer school group resides for Milton Avenue School. And you can see that there are some recognizable districts in this chart. This is the peer school group for Southern Boulevard and then for Washington Avenue. And it's important to note that each of our three K-3 schools is in a different peer school group. This is the peer school group for Lafayette Avenue School, Chatham Middle School, and Chatham High School. As I mentioned, I'll now share some actual testing data with you in, in the form of a chart. So this is actually, these two charts here represent the grade three uh, the percentage of students who fall in the partially proficient range, the percentage of students who fall in the proficient or better range, or the percent of students who fall in the advanced proficiency rate. I identified Chatham with the blue bar and the average of the peer school group comparisons for grade three with red. So by looking at this, you can see that Chatham has fewer students in the partially proficient range than the average of the peer school group. And in English and mathematics, you could see we have more students in the advanced proficiency range than the average of the peer school group. And with regard to English and language arts, we fall slightly before, below the average of the peer school group. Now in grade four, we actually have fewer students in partially proficient and more students in advanced proficient. This trend continues in grade five where we see a similar performance and again in grade six. Now in grade seven, we maintain a fewer student percentage in partially proficient, and in, with regard to advanced proficiency, we have a slightly lower percent of students in this category in both English language arts and mathematics. We trail slightly below in advanced proficiency in mathematics by two, one hundredths of, two tenths of a point. Now in grade eight, we resort back to that trend in grade that we saw in grade four, five, and six. And by the time our students um, in grade 11, we actually see that same trend as well. Fewer students in the partially proficient category and more students falling in the advanced proficiency range. Now the next two slides will show the performance of our students in the area of science. Students are tested in science in grades four, eight, four and eight on the New Jersey ASK and we will continue to administer that assessment this year as required by the State Department of Education. And our students in grade 11 are assessed in their knowledge of science on the end of course biology exam. So as this slide shows, our students have, we have fewer percentage of students in partially proficient and more in advanced proficient. And with regard to the end of course biology, we see a similar trend. The next, the next two slides basically show, show another visual representation of the data I just shared. It's just in one chart. So this is our partially proficient range for each grade level in English language arts and mathematics. And you could see here that we have a consistently low percent of students in partially proficient than that of the peer school average. This is a similar chart, however, it shows the advanced proficiency range, the advanced per proficiency percentages. Chatham is represented by the blue line and the peer group average is represented by the red. And you could see that um, with regard to mathematics, we follow a similar trend to that of the peer school group average. We have a slight dip in grade seven, much like the other schools in our peer school group. And then by the time um, grade eight to 11, you could see that the district basically maintains a flat level, whereas the peer school group average, they actually dip. And in the, with regard to English language arts, in, in grades four, five, six, eight, and 11, we have a higher number of students in the advanced proficiency range, and we have a slightly lower average in grades three and seven. The next two slides speak specifically to the high school and earlier this evening, Mrs. Weber spoke about the post-secondary attendance rate. And basically this tracks the students' attendance in college 16 months after graduation. And the schools that are shown here in this chart are those of the peer school group 
for Chatham High School. And you could see here that Chatham High School is top of the peer school group, obviously because they're, we have the, high, the second highest um, post-secondary attendance in the first of public schools in the state of New Jersey. So we can surmise that our students do very well when they leave us. This here shows, again, the schools in the peer school, peer school group category for Chatham High School. And Chatham has the second highest advanced, the advanced placement participation rate in its category. So after looking at this data and some of the programs that we have in the school district, there are some next steps that we are going to take. We had a program enhancement to the area of mathematics at the middle school, and we've had some implementation with regard to problem solving in the K-5 to mathematics program, so we will continue to support these initiatives. In English language arts, we've had an initiative to expand independent reading in grades four and five, so we will continue to support that initiative. And we will also begin to implement units of study for writing at Chatham Middle School using Lucy Calkins, who is from Teachers College at Columbia University, using those teachers' resources to support that implementation as well. Now, earlier this month, Dr. Barry Ehrlichson, the Assistant Commissioner of Education, shared a presentation where she provided an overview of what the PARC score reports may look like. And this, the next three slides show these score reports. These reports have more information than we have been provided by New Jersey ASK in the past. So when you look at this slide, um, students will be compared in four categories. They will be compared to their school, the district, the state, and also student performance um, of other students in the country that have taken the park assessment. In addition, you can see where students fall with regard to these levels in the subcategories of reading. So for example, it's kind of small here, but you can see the performance of students in the literary text, the informational text, and vocabulary. And, and the reports will also provide a percentile score. So you can see the percentile of the student when compared to the state, and the percentile of the student when compared to other park scores. And as I mentioned earlier, on Monday, we will administer the first park assessment at Lafayette Chatham High School and Chatham Middle School. And March 9th, we will administer an assessment, the park assessments in the K-3 schools. And at this point, all of our teachers have been trained in the administration of tests. Our teachers have taken students through the tutorials and some of the practice assessments. So we are, we are as in best shape as we possibly can be at this point. Any questions? I do, I do have a question. On the AP participation, do we anticipate that to go up a smidge because we're now offering AP um, micro and macroeconomics tests? I know the students could always take the test, but now we're actually offering the course as well. Yeah, I, I believe that now that we have those courses, our students would be more inclined to actually take those um, as a result of being in the actual class. Right, okay. Those are the only two AP courses we offered added last year, correct? Well, one, one course, no. Um, We've always had the computer science. The, the economics class that we offer covers macro and micro economics, mm -hmm. so they could take both of those mm -hmm. tests. They'd be pretty well prepared for that. There's no additional courses that would allow them to take new tests, correct? Uh, AP Chinese is the only other one. AP Chinese. Okay. <coughs> oh, because those kids are But now we only have a couple of kids in that course right now, whereas okay. we have 100 or so in the economics. Okay. Yes. Jersey report cards. From the school report. The new, the for the school, school report. Yeah. So how do they access that information? The kids are no longer in the system. Yeah, so the state clearing. of New Jersey contracts with something, uh, an organization called the National Clearinghouse, and it uh, includes 95% of the universities and colleges in the United States. And so they supply the information na nationally to this clearinghouse, uh, and that's where they draw the, the data from. Uh, international schools are not included. So if you get, you know, a few, usually we have a couple of kids at least that go to a school out of country, they don't end up included in the percentage of students that are uh, still in post-secondary. 
93 percent is okay. is you know great. It's a great indicator of success that the kids are well prepared and doing well and staying in school and and completing their post secondary schooling. So that's a fantastic. And I mean, most of our kids are here K to 12, but even the kids that move in. Mm -hmm. When they leave here, they're very well prepared to be successful wherever they decide to go. If we send dozens of students to Oxford next year, that number will drop. <laughs> <laughs> or McGill. If, uh, you know what? I'll take the hit. If they get into Oxford Agreed. and they're on their Agreed. way to being Rhodes Scholars, I'm okay with that. Just to let you know, this presentation will be posted on the district website as well, probably beginning by the end of the day tomorrow. Nice recognition, too, for Lafayette Avenue School because the, the administration and the principals and vice principals and the staff of there have spent a tremendous amount of time working on, on uh, making sure the students there are very successful and prepared for middle school. So that was a nice recognition for Lafayette Avenue School. Fantastic presentation. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. And Ms. Else have any questions? No? Board members? Yes. Hey, I was a little concerned about the AP rate. I want to be on the top of that chart. <laughs> Dr. Lasusa, you want to? That's, uh, that's oh. it for my report. That was the. Did you want to say anything about the sports weekend for the uh, Lady Cougars and the track, men's track? I can't keep up with the, the sports accolades, to be uh, honest with you. Is that I, right? I, too, too well, we, our boys track has taking home uh, medals and honors that it never has before in the history of the district. Our girls swimming team won another state championship, five in a row. Um, five. We have our bas boys basketball team playing for a county uh, championship this weekend, I think. Um, there are other accolades that I, I can I, I don't have right off the top of my head right now, but we've got... But we're knocking it out of the park. We're having a great season again. Five, five consecutive state titles. And the middle school musical was very good. I enjoyed that. And we've got the high school musical Careful, coming up. Careful, you're coming into week. my report now. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please do. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just repeat it. In, in the biz, they call that a teaser. That's right. Okay, thank you. Um, Peter, do you mind going on to the construction report? Sure. I am very proud to announce that the contractor has completed the inside work on the construction. Uh, High School Phase Two Construction Edition. He's been issued uh, the temporary certificate of occupancy. Um, only it is only temporary because he cannot complete the outside work due to the weather, so he can't com complete all of the landscaping. Uh, the contractor had finished uh, as of last Thursday. The district staff is going through the final cleaning and waxing the floors to our district standards, and the high school have use of the rooms uh, Monday morning, March second. Okay, great. And the bottom rooms, they're in use. They're back in circulation. The original four from phase one were in use as of September, and now they're connected. The temporary construction barrier is gone. There is a, I can't remember if it's a girls' room or a boys' room right on the first floor, stairs to go up and, yep. and access, and there's whatever gender opposite restroom is on the Oops. second floor. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay. Moving on to committee reports, uh, personnel, Ms. Kenny. Yes, the personnel committee met last Wednesday, um, and uh, we discussed uh, several requirements and uh, replacement strategies that. Oh, sorry. Uh, the committee met last Wednesday, and um, we discussed several retirements, and we discussed the strategies to. Um, replace uh, some of those teachers. Uh, Beth Grant is going to be going to the University of Delaware and TCNJ to interview candidates <coughs> at uh, fairs that those two institutions um, are going to be holding. I forget, was, is it going to be in April that you're going? In April. Um, we also discussed uh, best practices as it relates to organizational structures um, um, and spent time discussing um, organizational structure within the, within the district and other items that are contained in the uh, agenda. Excellent. Does anybody have any questions for Ms. Kenny? No? Thank you. Ms. Grant, I just have to say thank you again. I know we kept you out till 10.30 that night. I know you're working 12 hours a day, and then our schedules were crazy, and it, it forced you to stay out that, late, that night very late. So thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, moving on to curriculum, Ms. Cronin. We have not met. Uh, finance and facilities, Mr. Gilfellan. Yes, we met on February the 19th. Uh, just three quick topics. 
one was uh, a meeting with the public relations firm that's continuing to help us in terms of getting out the message in terms of the referendum and um, the reason why we're doing the referendum, helping us put together the pieces of the puzzle in terms of uh, each one of the individual projects and why it means so much uh, to the district. And then we discussed tonight's open finance meeting uh, and the original figures that Mike presented. And then last but not least, we just went through the open public referendum meeting, which is set for Saturday at 8.30 to 10.30 at the high school gym. Auditorium. Uh, whatever. <laughs> auditorium, gym. It's all the same thing. Um, in the auditorium. And I believe our next meeting is scheduled for March the 4th. But I do believe we'll need to switch that since I'll be swishing and dishing in Colorado. So we need to figure something out. Maybe we'll do it without you. Or you can do it without me. Please do. Go. But if you need me there. Yeah, you're going to have an attitude about it. <laughs> <laughs> Policy and planning, Mr. Belding. <laughs> uh, the policy committee has not met. Our next meeting is March 11th at 6.30. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to liaison reports, Mr. Connors for Chatham Borough. Nothing to report from the borough. Thank you. Moving over to the township, Ms. Clark. Nothing to report from the township. Back to you, Mr. Connors, for the athletic boosters. Uh, the athletic boosters have not met since our last uh, meeting. They are meeting on March 10th, but as Mr. Gilfillan will, will mention, uh, one of the topics that was discussed at the last meeting was the donating close to four thousand uh, dollars to our athletic uh, sports and programs. And once again, I would urge one and all, if you have a high school student, please attend the boosters, the Chatham Athletic Boosters. Uh, they provide a great service to the district. They're always there for us, similar to the Chatham Athletic Education Foundation, the Music Foundation. We are blessed with a tremendous amount of support from the various boosters. So. Please come. Thank you, Mr. Connors. Uh, moving on to th theater and boosters, that would be me. So I just want to say um, congratulations to a few of our performing arts folks. So Anthony Palma, he was named Musician of the Month uh, by the Mayo Performing Arts Center in Morristown. Uh, he was nominated for as a standout musician for his dedication, leadership, and his talent. And we also recently at the high school had a professional percussionist come in, Joe Bagami. And uh, he gave a, he, he's done four or five Broadway plays, beautiful, Rock of Ages, Moving Out, Jersey Boys. So he spoke to the kids a little bit about what it's like to be a professional musician, some of the trials and tribulations as he's gone along in his career, and also um, jammed with the kids. And you know, specific, specifically, he worked with our percussionists at the high school. So that was nice to get a little taste of reality and what it's like to be a professional musician. Um, congratulations, as Dr. Lususa said, to the Little Mermaid cast and crew. They um, sold out performances on the 6th, 7th, and 8th of February, so they did a great job. I think there were 80 or 90 crew member cast and crew, so it's a large portion of the school. The Chatham Middle School 8th grade band entertained the Devils hockey fans at a, uh, a game in February, February 17th. There was a fan bus that transported the musicians and hockey fans to the event. Uh, the Ch uh, Chatham band family went out, watched them before the game, and then the Devils actually won in overtime, so it was a very exciting game for everybody. Senior soprano, senior at the Chatham High School, senior soprano um, Anastasia Artavides performed at the New Jersey Performing Arts Center, um, the All States Women Chorus, on Saturday, February 21st. She spent two days at Rutgers campus rehearsing for the concert, which culminated in the event for the New Jersey Educators and, and Conference. This is about her 575th accolade and award. She has really done had a phenomenal career here. Uh, the annual Breakfast with the Musicians is also February 28th at 8.30 to 11.30 at the Chatham High School. That's more of an open house, kind of drop in, come and see the bands. Uh, the cast of the High School Musical will also be performing um, Once Upon a Mattress, which is going to be March 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th at the high school. Play again is Once Upon a Mattress. The Senior Citizens performance will take place on March 4th. That's at 3.30 in the afternoon. And then right after that, the seniors are treated to dinner and the cast wanders and, and meets the seniors and they get a nice time to interact. That's always a sellout crowd for that dinner. That is my report. Uh, moving on to Chatham Education Foundation. Big weekend. Yes, uh, I'd like to just remind everybody that Friday is the Taste of Chatham. Uh, it's going to be held at Fairmount Country Club and tickets are still available. Um, and in addition, uh, the... Uh, as Matt will say in his finance report there's another generous contribution of over $12,000 that they're um, giving to the school district. 
Nice. Recreation, Mr. Nonmaker? Yes, recreation has not met since our last meeting, meeting, so I have nothing to report. Sorry. Next time. Next time. And PTO District Cabinet, Ms. Cronin? Yes, Thank you. Um, any other questions for liaisons? I can't believe it's almost March and Mr. Nonamaker didn't mention wrestling. It's like crime scene. Oh, 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 <laughs> but this proud. is it. This is the this is the Super Bowl of wrestling. Listen, I'm very proud to announce that our youth program, our you gotta realize that New Jersey's the number one state in the country. And we wrestle in northwestern New Jersey. We finished the season, the dual meet season, twelve and one. And we took second place in, in the league tournament. And we are now, Chatham is now considered one of the powerhouses in northwestern New Jersey. And we have eight boys so far who have qualified to wrestle in the States. So I'm very proud of our program and all of our boys that participate in it. Well done. Thank you, Mr. Nonamaker. Thank you. If you didn't have your mic turned on, you have to repeat what you said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Rich says his was Just on. Just kidding. Just kidding. There will be a handout issue to one of all. Uh, very good. <laughs> I would like to make a motion to pass um, several public and executive sessions. January 12th, public and executive session. January 14th, public and executive session. And January 28th, the special meeting um, to discuss the referendum. Could I get a second on that? Second. I second. Excellent. I any discussion on those? All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Any abstentions? I'm sure. I have to abstain for the, uh, special. Duly noted that Mr. Nonamaker is abstaining from January 12th, Mr. Belding and Ms. Cronin from the 14th, and Mr. Franz from the 28th. Thank you. Great, thank Other you. Other than that, all else voting. Hmm. Well, Excellent. Very good, thank you. We have our first opportunity for public commentary. Um, as usual, I'm just going to do my public service announcement. If you could just keep it to two or three minutes. Um, when you come up, please sign in. And please be very respectful of the other members of the audience and the administration. And if you could just announce your name and if you live in the township or borough. Hi, uh, my name is Alex Frenzel. I live in the borough. I'm here um, because I'm the class representative for the class of 2016, so like, it's my first time here, but um, I'm here to talk about, we have, I'm on the student advisory committee for the school, which is a group of students that meets with the administration every other month, and recently we had our class meeting about the schedule for next year, and we were told, like much to everybody's surprise, that we're supposed to have a marking period of health next year, which was never in the plan and which we didn't know about, so we had a meeting, um, in our next student advisory committee meeting, a lot of the kids in my grade and the grade below me were talking to the administration about it, were pretty confused. Um, we listed all our complaints and stuff, and Mr. Grow and Mr. Rondo were really receptive, but they told us we should probably go to the board. So that's why I'm here. And I just wanted to kind of make a motion that the health curriculum, like the new, I know that there's a plan to start it so that freshmen have a semester of health, and after that, they have a marking period each year. But we had, my class had a full year of health freshman year. And so we've actually already done all our health requirement. And we've completed more health than any previous Chatham High uh, class to go through the high school. So um, I'm here to kind of ask that our grade, that this new health system be instituted once our grade has left, because it's kind of, everyone's been expecting all through our high school careers that like we've known what our schedule's going to be and we've planned our schedules around it. And now for kids that, like you guys are talking about how awesome our athletics is and it's really great that we have exemptions for the student athletes because it really does take up a lot of time. So for everyone that was planning an exemption, they now have a full marking period where they're not going to have that. And it's going to be in the first half of the year when kids are applying to college. So an entire free period where like we would have had a free period to do homework and now we're going to have another class, that's a big change. And some kids are even thinking of changing their whole schedule because of it, like taking one less class or taking electives instead of an AP because they're worried about not having that study hall. And then for kids who, even for kids who don't have an exemption, um, a lot of kids look forward to gym. It's like a nice release not being in the classroom for a period. And a lot of kids are kind of bummed that 
we're going to be doing another marking period of health, especially because we did have a full year of just health, and so we've already covered all the topics that they plan to have covered. And in future um, classes, they're not going to do a full year of freshman health and then continue marking periods. They're going to, they're planning on reducing the amount of freshman health done. So like that kind of shows that even the administration doesn't think an entire year and a half of health instruction is necessary. So. Wow. You must be very healthy. <laughs> we want you to be exceptionally healthy. Dr. Lasusa, would you mind addressing this or punt it to Mr. Lewis if you choose? Sure. Um, <clears throat> Thank you, Alex. Very well done. Um, the, the subject of health and physical education has, has been a long-running one. So several years ago, well, I'll start by saying every student in New Jersey, K through 12, is required to participate in health or physical education class uh, uh, for an average of 150 minutes per week. And several years ago, we instituted a change, as you reference, um, to the uh, physical education requirement at the high school, whereby students could opt out or um, uh, be exempt from physical education class if they were engaged in other um, physical activities, like the like uh, the interscholastic athletic program. We've been evaluating how well the change has gone in terms of front loading. Uh, freshmen with health. We did that specifically because we wanted to get out in front of issues we were dealing with, uh, like substance abuse, um, like stress management, so on and so forth. Uh, and after a good couple of years now of, of discussing it, we really felt that we needed to uh, double back and um, instruct students about certain topics. Um, and those topics range from everything from fire safety, uh, based on certain tragedies at colleges and universities, even near, near here, uh, to more substance abuse awareness education, um, to a whole host of other uh, topics. And we think that the most appropriate way to do that is by uh, exposing kids to health again, junior and senior year. Uh, students would still be eligible for a physical education exemption, which five years ago no student was eligible for. Uh, so we didn't think that it was onerous to have one marking period uh, of health um, when you could be exempt uh, potentially from up to three marking periods of physical education. The only goal is to try to um, bring our students to be as well adjusted and aware <laughs> of issues that are critical uh, by the time they leave us and head off into college or at whatever other endeavor they pursue. Uh, and we you know, had the presentation probably a month ago or so now with Mr. Grow. Um, and, you know, we're intending to run uh, health junior, senior year. Thank you, Dr. Lasusa. Thank you, Alex, for your presentation. I appreciate it. Okay. The, uh, so we're going to forge ahead because substance abuse, the trends are such that we really need to address it again. And you are clearly a different student as a junior, senior than you were as a freshman. So you're even in your social life are being exposed to far more. And we need to readdress those subjects again. So. Unfortunately, the trends in substance abuse and, and life-altering substance abuse is, you know, the, the Molly drug and, you know, they're, they're, they're immediately life-impacting sometimes when you take them. So we do need to readdress this subject again. You're going to enjoy it. <laughs> but I will also say Mr. Groh and Mr. Ronda have been, and the whole high school administration yeah. have been talking about uh, how to um, carry this out as to whether or not it's, you know, maybe possible to have some flexibility with respect to when students may fulfill the health requirements. So th those discussions are still taking place. And I think that the, the program, as we have articulated, it will continue to evolve. Okay. Right. Thank you, Alex. Well done. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. That was very nice. Yes. A marking period. Is that your health book? <laughs> Can I thank you again for coming? Jane, De Can you hear? Jane Devlin, Chatham Township, and Jane. I have to start by a quick disclaimer because accolades abound tonight of achievements in all areas of academics plus sports and performing arts. And I too am so proud and grateful to be in Chatham and include in those accolades applause for the teachers, administrators, and board. 
I support excellence, so I don't want it mistaken that I want to dilute achievements in the schools, nor do I want to come off as adversarial, but sometimes we have to look at both sides of a coin. So with that said, in the same fashion that the school district of the Chathams identified emerging needs such as character education, STEM, new cycle classes, and expanded health classes and topics, so should homework be subject to a comprehensive review with an eye towards overhaul. Is it meeting our children's needs, what benefits, at what costs, and what is truly important? More than a set in stone policy, the aim is to change the culture, philosophy, mindset concerning homework starting and exemplified at an administrative and board level, which fans out then to teachers K through 12. The many excellent series offered by the school district, to name just a few, Think Critically, Don't Bully, Be Mindful, Develop Strategies to Distress, de-stress, are tokenistic if action doesn't follow. And action is best proactively rather than reactive. Control from the onset for the students the amount of overwork, overload, stress, and tiredness. Consequently, there may be less calls for yoga classes and gym as stress buses, busters, less incidences of self-medicating to relax by drugs and alcohol amongst our teens, and less reports from local clinicians that anxiety in grade school is starting younger and younger if the youth weren't so overextended and tired to begin with. Certainly revamping and reducing homework isn't a panacea for all stress, but it can send positive and helpful messages. It's okay to rest, it's okay to have downtime after being studious all day. Being your best does not require being on for 24 hours a day, nor does it require excelling at everything. There is more to a successful life than can be measured by grades or titles or salary. And lastly, overdrive skews perspective and decisions. So yes, it is about mindset and attitude changes. Presently, the mindset about homework seems to be it's necessary to teach children how to be responsible and organized as adults. Is this the only way that can be taught? It's a requirement, as one teacher said, a requirement, but extracurricular is a privilege and parents want to expect it as part of a high-performing school district. Can you wrap Yet, it up, Jane, if you would? I, Thank you. I know. No, okay. Yet, I have one paragraph. Yet schools in New Jersey, from Tenafly to Milburn to Madison, are culling from the curriculum much of what was considered essential, exams, homework, and at minimum are open to meaningful, transparent, and exclu inclusive dialogue regarding change. And I hope that dialogue can start at the school district here. Thank, Thank you. you. We talk about it all the time, you and I. Thank you very much. Any additional public commentary at this time? There's another up to uh, Mr. Ruth. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Alan Ruth from Chatham Township. Um, on behalf of the Chatham Education Foundation, and we have two other board members here, May Hacking and Ham Polamani, tonight, out of our uh, approximately 18 board members, I'd like to present to checks to the Board of Education for $12,243 for three grants uh, since the last uh, Board of Ed meeting. Uh, the largest one is for Washington Avenue School, $9,569 for 28 Chromebooks for use by 240 K uh, grades two and three students. <coughs> and uh, the second largest is something called Building a Community of Readers in Chatham Middle School for $2,174. And these are actual physical books that they're buying. Believe it or not, they still sell those. Oh. And <laughs> so, so they're, uh, they're trying to reacquaint the students with things that are not electronic. And uh, the third grant is an electronic uh, reading grant for Washington <laughs> Avenue School called Raz Kids for $499. So I'd like to present this check to Dr. LaSouza uh, for uh, use by the district. And... This brings the total grants fiscal year to date to over $69,000 from the Ed Foundation. And it brings our lifetime grants to the district to $932,000. So we're closing in on that million dollar mark. And in that regard, our largest fundraiser of the year, as Lotta mentioned, is the Taste of Chatham. 
Usually we have about three Board of Ed members uh, there. We'd like to have a lot more of you to please consider uh, logging on and uh, joining us and joining other board members and kind of showing the flag for the board at the, t at the Taste of Chatham. It will be a wonderful event. Uh, last year we had a few too many people, so we've <laughs> reduced the number of tickets that we're selling. And we had a little, too little food, so we've increased the amount of food we have. And we didn't have enough of some other things that people like to consume. And we're going to have more of those things. Uh, they are legal, by the way. They are not illegal substances. So we would like to encourage uh, as many of the board who uh, can spare the time on Friday night to please come join us. So with that, I'd like to present the check. Thank you. Are there any additional public commentaries for the first session? There'll be another opportunity for public commentary. Oh, very good. Hi, Nancy Geyer, 7 Inwood Road, Chatham. I um, just wanted to talk about the referendum meeting on Saturday morning at 8.30. Will it be similar to the meeting that was held on the 28th with uh, questions being asked and then the panel and Dr. LaSouza and others asking questions? Yes. Will anyone be allowed to speak or will it be just open to everyone, students, uh, children, Yes, it will be. It's an open public meeting. So anyone can speak, even those sure. that are, um, you know, student age, uh, non-taxpayers, sure, they can speak. We're a school district. Yes. Right. Okay. I, I agree with that. I just don't want it to take time away from people who are actually um, paying for this. It's an open public meeting. Okay. Okay. I appreciate that, and I appreciate the board allowing us to have another meeting. And Mr. Connors, thank you for the idea of opening it for a Saturday. That was that was great. Will there be a follow-up meeting to this one as well prior to the uh, final on the 23rd? Yeah. There's another meeting on the, the budget meeting? I'm sorry. No. No, the referendum, an open public meeting for the referendum? No, on the 28th? Yeah, is that the last one? Yes, that's the third. Okay, that's the third. Open. Third okay. public push, yeah. Okay, and is the board going to decide shortly after that um, how they're going to list the questions? Yes. And when will we be um, notified via through the district website or... That'll be on which meeting that we have to do the following Board of Ed meeting? Okay. March 9th, thank you. Okay, and um, looks like things are really well. There was a lot of positive reports about uh, academics here in the district, which just confirms to me that it is about programs and not about um, the building. So I do appreciate that, and thank you for that information, and thank you again to the Board for all your work that you're doing for this. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Amanda Feeman, 233 Shunpike Road. Uh, I'm actually here, I normally stand up and I have uh, challenged you at times in relation to what you're doing with K through three education. Okay. I'm here to say I was amazed. I went to question, I, I went to observe and I had the honor of having Mrs. Quigley walk me around Washington Avenue School. to talk about whether my daughter was ready for first grade. And I apologize for getting emotional. I didn't expect to do it. That's okay. Take your time. We have a lot to be proud of. In the course of a week, I visited almost every private school within a 20 to 30 mile radius. And I walked into the first grade classroom at Washington Avenue and no private school held a candle to what was being taught in our classrooms. I was astounded at the individualized attention that students received. I was astounded that no child was treated as different. There were kids that were, had desks turned towards windows. There were kids that were wearing headphones. There were kids that had 15 books piled up for individualized reading because they were at a different reading level. And there was a teacher and an aide who was teaching all of these children in one classroom. And no matter what level these children were at, they all felt normal. So I walked out with a parent with the hugest sigh of relief and never prouder in my life to live on a busy street in Chatham <laughs> because Mrs. Quigley in this school system, at every point when I walked through that school, I was assured, we will support your child. We want children to be successful. And I sat here and listened to through presentations 
And you can look at the statistics and you can look at them as pushing our children. But I heard that day, we want to look at what children really need. And if you tell us what they need, we will do our best to get it for them. And that was starting in first grade. So I want to stand up here and say, I do think that you are doing the right things. And as we are going into a referendum, I think you are trying to achieve some of the objectives and the challenges that may put stresses, particularly on K through three education when we're looking at classroom sizes, because I, 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 think, I think we are headed in the right direction when we look at things and the more information that you give us to the public, I think is, it makes it easy for us to support you. But really, I, I think we have a lot to be proud of and I've sent a letter to Mrs. Quigley but I wanted to say it openly to you as a board that I, I was very impressed. Thank you. I appreciate that. And that's a dedicate, you know, a tribute to the staff, the students, the administration. And this didn't happen in the last year. This has been decades of a district doing the right thing, looking ahead, seeing what the students need, need and maintaining. Cory Booker once said his father took him to task when he was, you know, some election, Senator Booker. His father said, don't run around here like you hit a home run when you started on third base. This board is kind of starting on third base. This is decades in the making of, of previous board members looking ahead, taking some heat, being challenged, trying to make sure the kids are, are situated, not just for this year, not next for next year, a decade, two decades, five decades down the road. So thank you. We appreciate it. This is decades in the making. Thank you very much. Not a little, all little. Yeah, a little bit. She comes up and complains all the time. It's time to get a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> That's not an invitation. Go sit down, please. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, I, I have to tell you. I mean, I, I had been. We've been trying to tell you that. <laughs> yeah. But, I, I mean, I think that's why I stand up here and I say, it, the more information that you can give people, it's easy for us to get on your side. Because I had been walked through a school system and had been shown kindergarten classrooms which were not the best fit for my child. And as soon as I was walked through the entire school, my eyes were opened to a lot of other areas. So I think that that's you know, one thing that I will come at you. I do genuinely believe that open communication does tend to get us to yep. a right. good right Thank answer. You. Fantastic. Thank you, Amanda. Appreciate it. We're going to move on to the action items, um, starting with person. Yeah, go ahead. I thought everybody had lined up already. Um, Libby Hills and Mass, 37 Weston Ave in the borough. Um, I think kind of following on what um, the other mom just said, um, the more information we have, the better, in order for all of us to be informed and make decisions. Um, I was at the Lafayette PTO meeting this past week, and Dr. Lusuza present had said that in regard to the uh, Performing Arts Center um, versus renovating each of the auditoriums versus expanding up or out, that the district had done analysis and looked at different locations, whether there are setback uh, restrictions and this and that. And I'm curious if, if there's anything available to the public that would show us that analysis that was done that came to the decision to put a Performing Arts Center on the middle school oval. You know, similar to what a homeowner would do when they're deciding whether to build or renovate. They'll contact different architects and different contractors and, and you know, do a, um, an analysis. Uh, more information, the better. And I think that was echoed at the Lafayette PTO meeting. We're not going to spend time right now packaging that up for the public because that's kind of our job. And, you know, we do the, do the analysis and we do go back out to the public and say, you know, we've done our due diligence. And in some cases, I mean, like the high school, there's just nowhere to push it out, you know. In well, some cases, I, I actually get to finish. You, you got your turn, so let me finish. In some cases, there's a physical footprint, and there are limitations, and you can't go beyond it. There are just physical <laughs> limitations. But, you know, between now and the, the referendum, we don't really have the information. We're not going to package it out to the public. We're, we're doing our due diligence. We're pushing out all the information that we can and have. So I, I'm, I'm going to say no. We're not going to give you the last 10 years of analysis on our facilities. So you've done 10 years worth of analysis? Yes, every board member that sits here and the previous board members have done extensive analysis on where do we need to be tomorrow, where do we need to be five years from now. I mean, Mr. Ruth was on the board years ago and we're always planning out, out, out. So yes, absolutely. And it's documented? It's documented in various committee meetings and the things that come to fruition are at the, on the agendas here. It's 
documented for the public to see? It's in our committee meetings. Those committee meetings minutes are not made public. They're not made public, but they're posted. We have them. Where? They're not posted publicly. Right, but the, the again, this is hours of dialogue, and what comes, the decisions come out in the agenda items. So do you have an additional question? So the answer was no to that one. Uh, I do have one other question. Uh, in light of what we found out from the District Bond Council about breaking out the referendum, uh, where it can be broken out for a separate vote, has the board um, taken the time to reconsider its position on bundling the referendum? Yeah, we're going to wait until after the 28th again to hear additional commentary. And, and then the 28th will be the final meeting? It'll be the final public meeting. It certainly won't be the final time we talk about it. Okay. And the decision will be March 9th? Correct. March 9th. Thank you. Any other public commentary before we move on? There's, again, there's another opportunity after um, we get through the board business. So moving on to personnel, Mr. Gil, I'm uh, sorry, Ms. Kenny. Yes, I would like to move action items A1 to A16 <coughs> for vote. I'll, I'll second the motion. Any discussion on A1 through A16? Sorry, if I could... Yeah, my, I, I apologize if I didn't hear, uh, but I see Mr. Chuck there is resigning. Yeah, I was going to say it's a little scary. Microphone. Mike, Mike, I think you should make a few comments about uh, Mike Chuck there because he's been with the district for close to 25 years or so. In fact, has uh, been a, a role model for the students, and I can tell you. Having met him on a number of occasions, he is, he's going to be quite a loss. So I think it'd be appropriate to make a few comments about his retirement. I'm sorry if I didn't No, he know said it. Um, my daughter has him this year, and he said it was his 41st year of teaching this year. Yeah, I was just um, going to say, yeah. The man fully dedicated. We've had some stalwarts um, whose resignations for the purpose of retirement we've accepted uh, over the last couple months. He's one of them. Uh, alongside Leslie Schwartz, who also, I think she was on the last agenda, I want to say. Um, but they both have had an extraordinarily, extraordinarily uh, long time of service in the district. They've impacted uh, loads of students. I was at the high school actually when Mr. Chupka's uh, kids went through the high school. Um, and the name right below that, May Hajar, that's kind of an unsung hero at Washington Avenue School, actually. Um, she's been a long time serving paraprofessional in the school, sort of a utility player who does anything you need and is one of those folks who doesn't maybe get a lot of attention but helps the whole building tick. Uh, so, yeah, very much uh, appreciative of both of their contributions. Thank you very much. Any other additional discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, Mr. DeQuilla, would you mind doing the roll? Agenda items A1 through 16. Mr. Gilbert. Yes. Mr. Gilbert. Yes. Ms. Clark. Yes. Mr. Connors. Yes. Ms. Gilbert. Yes. Mr. Connors. Yes. Ms. Connors. Yes. Ms. Kenny. Yes. Mr. Nonmaker. <laughs> yes. And Ms. Weber. Yes. Agenda items pass 9 0. Moving on to finance and facilities, Mr. Gilfillan. I'd just like to move action items B1 through 20 with B12 as amended on your agenda. I'll second the motion. Um, Pete, one question, uh, the restroom upgrade, do we have a history with Finewall Corporation? No, we didn't. The district does not. Who did the middle school bathrooms last summer? Uh, the GL group, so the oh, GL, GL group did not even bid this job, and to my recollection, Finewall did not bid the jobs that we did at Washington and the middle school restroom last year. Okay. Um, okay, a couple donations to note, um, one from the Lafayette Avenue School PTO in the amount of uh, almost $12,000 for the purchase and installation of a sunshade shade system to create a shaded social area on the school's playground. Interesting. Um, Mr. Ruth already came up and talked to his donation. Mr. Connors talked to his donation from the uh, boosters. In two amounts, um, a couple of donations from the Target Corporations, uh, two, one for about $100 and one for almost $500 for the principals of the high school and the Milton Avenue School to use their discretion. A donation for an individual in town, which we always like to know, uh, Don Leota, in the amount of $100 for a number of different things for the music department. We'd like to, again, thank them for all their efforts and monetary awards. Thank you, Matt. 
Any additional discussion or comments on finance or facilities? Nope. Seeing none, Mr. DeCrella? Agenda items B1 through 20 with B12 being amended for the generous CEF grant. Mr. Gilfill? Yes. yes. Mr. Belding? Yes. Mrs. Clark? Yes. Mr. Connors? Yes. Mrs. Cronin? Yes. Mr. Franz? Yes. Ms. Kenny? Yes. Mr. Nonamaker? Yes. And Ms. Weber? Agen yes, sorry. Agenda items pass 9 0. Very good. Moving on to curriculum, Ms. Cronin? Yes, I'd like to move action items 1 through 3. I'll second the motion. You're very welcome. Um, I just have one silly question. I'm trying to figure out how the music department in eighth grade is going to go to Dorney Park and hear about music. Are they going to be forced to listen to that horrendous? What do you call this thing? <laughs> that horrendous music on the uh, merry go round. Yes. They perform. Oh, they perform. Yeah. They perform, and they're actually judged. So they perform merry go round music. They That's sit right. there and they go, that I don't know. Now they do go every year, and they're actually adjudicated there and given ratings. And then in the afternoon, they um, are allowed to go around the park as long as it's not thundering and lightning. <laughs> Lightning is a bit of a deterrent, like it was last year. On the merry uh, in, in, in the park, friends. they performed but came home early. They should wear helmets. <laughs> Any additional question on curriculum? No. Seeing none, Mr. DeQuilla. Agenda item C1 through C3. Mr. Gilfillan. Yes. Mr. Bell. Yes. Mr. Clark. Yes. Mr. Thomas. Yes. Mr. Bell. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Yes, thank you. Moving on to board business. Do any board members have additional board member, board business they'd like to bring up? Any new? Oh, Ms. Clark? I just, um, I want to kind of just go back to what Alex said about the health. Um, mm -hmm. I know this is a big buzz. I have a rising junior next year. The kids are all up and on about this. And I think it, you know, obviously it's not their choice. Curriculum changes. You know, we goals change that are becoming this very important. Um, I think it should be you know, brought back to them as the rationale as to why it's not a choice that they need to have these health costs, that we feel it is a priority due to the changing culture and time. But, and I also think that a lot of thought needs to be put into these health classes to make it meaningful and worthwhile for these students to sit there. Yep. Um, not a sit and get for them, but I think we need to make an effort to really bring in people, have them not get the same thing, really hear a lot of things that are going on there that can impact their life and make this experience one that they can take out into the real world. Thank you. Any additional board business? Okay, great. We have our second opportunity for public commentary. Again, not to be, um, you know, beat a dead horse here. And even though it does sound like we are saying no PAC, I really believe we are not saying no PAC, although in a way we are. We are saying we want more research. We want more understanding of where the studies are done with traffic, with safety, with construction, with cost of construction, cost of running the buildings. I mean, I feel like this is being rushed through, and we're saying let's take our time, let's get the facts, let's get the information on this. We're not saying let's not do this. We're saying let's go back to the drawing board because we, the public, just found out about, well, I just found out about this in November. So I feel like we are saying let's go back to the drawing board. Let's talk about the details of the PAC. There's not enough info. Uh, I'm not seeing enough info on the cost for this, the construction. When does it start? When does it stop? When will it end? Who's going to utilize the building? And, and so on and so forth. So I really um, just want to ask, what is the urgency of, of this pack? Thank you. Are there any additional public commentary? This is new, right, Ms. Devlin? Non homework? New, yeah, new topic? Correct. Thank you. I just want to say I support the referendum as it is, not to be truncated out. I have to say, uh, with respect to the last uh, public commentary, I don't think it's sudden. I don't think it's new. I think it's been a long time coming. I think it's thoughtfully been researched, and I think it is a culmination of many years 
of needs being brought to this board and your predecessors, and this is the right time to go forward with this to benefit the children of the school district now and in the future. So I do support it, and I don't think it's, it's sudden by any means. I think it's long overdue. And with that in closing, I just have to say, I support this board on this issue and on many issues, and I have to take a particular moment. I didn't take it before because I didn't want to take away from my homework three or three plus minutes. But with all sincerity and authenticity, I have to compliment many things that are done at this school district, often spearheaded by Dr. Lasusa, particularly his uh, superintendent series that he rolled out this year that was intelligent, interesting, thoughtful, creative. Uh, and in closing, I have to say, at every one of those series, and, and including at many other things that I intend, I see a number of board members, but particularly this year's president, at so many things. Um, you're really there, you're really involved, you're really engaged, and you're really representing the board, and I think making a very good bridge to the community and the board. I think we're having a better understanding of that you're representing us, and I see that as positive, and thank you. Thank you, Jane, I appreciate it. Those series have been excellent, very interesting, very thought-provoking, a lot of good open dialogue yes. with the community and the, and the parents. We, you know, yeah, those series have been great, Dr. LaSusa. Thank you. Uh, I just have a, a question that I couldn't uh, ask the last time, um, but it goes along with this. What, can you tell us what the criteria are that the board uses to make decisions in putting forth what the projects are for a referendum and how they'll be bundled? Are they quantifiable? Is it merely public input? I mean, what's, what's the criteria that's, that are used to make these decisions? Right, I mean, the board And is do you eventually at, vote? Right, and it's, it, you know, it stems from the Finance and Facilities Committee meeting, and then they put recommendations forward looking at various options. But this has been going on literally for decades. This is not a conversation that started in November. This started long before Jim O'Neill even thought about retiring. So you can't say it was rushed. You could say it if you want, but it's not the case. Um, I didn't say that. I asked what the criteria is that the, criteria the board is uses to make its decision. On, oh, go ahead, Mr. Belding. So keeping in mind that we are elected, delegated officials of the town, we represent the town. Um, we do have supplemental meetings occasionally, such as the, the meetings on the referendum, to add uh, as much public input as possible. Meanwhile, uh, over the time that each of us is elected, which is three years and longer because the board has continuity and the administration has continuity, we intrinsically look at the needs of the district. We have been aware for years, as has been pointed out, that the high school auditorium was woefully inadequate, was obsolete in many respects, was not up to code and so forth, similarly to some other facilities within the district. So in the current environment, there was a confluence, there was a, uh, a coming together of a number of adventitious, uh, advantageous circumstances, a low interest rate, um, uh, the, uh, the, the coming together of, of a group of needs, um, as is part of the referendum, uh, the continuing burgeoning of the, of the enrollment uh, within the district, the uh, development of additional needs, such as in the STEM program and so forth. The awareness that anything that we can do to reduce our operating expenses, such as the expense of maintaining our administrative offices in this building here, which we don't own, okay, which costs us $100,000 a year roughly, okay, um, is there another solution that we, can, uh, that we can use to accommodate that? The interest in putting our, the focus of our operations, uh, such as our board meetings and so forth, in, an, in a location which is more advantageous for the bulk of the of the, of the town's population. So all of those things came together. So what appears to have been a, an urgent, you know, uh, you know uh, off-the-cuff kind of decision was not at all. Um, it was simply that a number of things came together at the right time, and in consultation with appropriate experts, 
on, um, on bond financing, on um, what we needed to go ahead uh, in, in various capacities, in terms of space, classroom space, um, in terms of space to support our activities, such as performing arts and all the other factors mentioned, this was the right time to do that. So, um, so just supporting everything that's been said from the standpoint, this is not an immediate offhand decision. It was the result of, of a lot of effort and talking to experts over a long period of time in building design, architecture, and so forth. And no, we don't keep exact minutes of each one of those meetings. Uh, we, we do have the meetings, however, and we make reports as appropriate in a public forum, which is our requirement, which is what we legally have to do. Okay? So, okay. a long-winded explanation, but that's no, how no, we got that to where was, we are at. That was um, an explanation. Thank you. Hi, Jessica Green, Wachung Avenue. Would you mind signing and, uh, Yeah. Thanks very much. I just want to say thank you so much um, for all of your work on this referendum. I fully support it. And um, as far as Little Mermaid goes, it was fantastic. There were 80 children in the cast, and there were over 40 um, in the crew. In makeup alone, I think there, were, there might have been 30 kids in the room at any given time. That's just makeup. So um, over well over 120 children involved in the production. So, um, and I want to thank um, uh, the sound crew brought over, I think it was like 25 mics from the high school, which I don't know if anyone saw the show last year, but this year the sound was much better because um, they borrowed the mics from the, um, from the high school. But anyway, I just want to say thank you, and um, we... Uh, we fully support keeping all the items together and that um, the athletics and the academics and the performing arts all need to be addressed. And I don't think that this is a rush thing as far as the, um, the auditoriums go because they are, they've been um, neglected for a while. They really have. And this is not, you know, we're at the point, we're at a crossroads. And I think we have to think of the students that we have now and also 60 years from now because who knows how long it's going to take for the next auditorium to be built. This, these, these have been from 1960, right? So it's, it's a long, long time coming. This is not something that's been rushed into. So thank you. Thank you very much. Any additional public commentary before we wrap up? Going once? Oh, there we go. I take her. <laughs> oh, Ron. I'm Jen Clark. I'm in the borough on Gerard Ave. And I just wanted to say, uh, just to echo the, the sentiments of support, and um, that I agree that the referendum should be held as one item, that I think breaking it up um, gives us, um, uh, could give us an issue with favoring different needs for different students in our district. And I think um, it meets the most need by keeping it as one item. We are looking forward to the meeting on Saturday morning. Uh, that combined with Breakfast at the Musicians, we hope to channel some support going to both events um, and uh, look forward to finding the decision on March 9th. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mrs. Clark. Any additional public commentary? Going once? Going twice? Sold? Thank you very much, everybody. Oh, do we have an executive session? No, I'd, I'd like to make a motion to close the public session. Second. Second. Third. All in favor? Ready, break. <laughs> for these um,